YouTube fan community, Bruce Johnson fans, random people on the internet. My name is Giggins, and we're here today to talk about Bruce Johnson's Surfing Around the World, released in 1963. This particular copy is a CBS Sony reissue from probably the late 70s, early 80s, and it sounds amazing. It looks amazing. It's got the words inside, a little, little picture of them in there. This album came out before Bruce joined the Beach Boys in 1965. This was 1963. And during this time, Bruce was a prolific songwriter, working alongside Terry Melcher pretty often. And he would write songs that sounded like the Beach Boys or Jan and Dean. Whatever was kind of current at the time, he was really good at replicating that sound. He had a really good ear and a really good way of displaying his talents. And this album really, really shines. So, like, it's really easy to write this album off as being a Beach Boys ripoff, uh, a surf ripoff of the time. You know, just a run-of-the-mill thing you'd find at the dollar bin. It sounds like surf music. It's not really like that. While there are moments that sound stereotypically surf rock, there's a lot on this album that shows his breadth of knowledge of the genre and his knowledge of other genres to incorporate little elements that make this thing stand out from the rest of the pack. For instance, on the opening track, Surfing Around the World, this thing is a loaded, dense production. Um, there's some awesome guitar solos in this thing. There's obviously a key change, but there's more frantic energy on this song than a Skittles commercial. If anything else was added to this song, they'd have to label it Monster Energy Drink because this thing is just chock full with enthusiasm. It pays off though. It's not just a bunch of sugary nonsense. Like, it really works. The, the youthful spirit is there. The energy of being out with your friends at the beach is there. It feels like summertime. So they nailed it. Moksha at Midnight is a really cool song. I really like the saxophone on this one, the way it rides seamlessly over the top, these easy breezy rhythms. Um, I love the reverb on it. It almost gives it a spooky kind of feeling, but it's just, it jams along nicely. It builds nicely. It's a well done track. Down Under is track three, and this is great because it's about taking that surfing train and heading down under and surfing with the kangaroos. Who doesn't want to surf with a kangaroo? I know I would. I don't even surf, but if a kangaroo was doing it, I would do it too. It makes it sound fun. You know, what I like about this idea, this whole surf around the world, obviously comes from Surfing USA, where they're talking about all the beaches across the world, which, you know, this thing mentions a little bit of that on the liner notes. But, you know, here we are down under. We're surfing everywhere. And it's just fun. It's just a good time. Up next is Cape Town. And this one has almost a ska rhythm to it here and there before crashing into this, like, wave riding good time. The guitars at one point literally sound like they're going to burn through the speakers. There's one, if there's one thing you want to take away from this album, it's the guitar tone. It shreds. The saxophone sings the vocal melody throughout this track, and it just carries itself well. It's a hell of a song. Biarritz? Biarritz? I might be saying that completely wrong, but I love the feel of this one. It's total Ray Charles, totally what I'd say, right down to the bell work on the cymbal. It feels like background music for an Annette Beach Party movie, and I mean that in the most loving way possible. It's just so fun, energetic, youthful, spirited. Just a groove. Side one ends with Jersey Channel Islands Part 7. Where are the first six, Bruce? Kind of a growling, sinister, fuzzy vibe on this thing. Like the darker tones on this song make for a grittier experience. It sounds like a bad time on the surf. Side two is where things really pick up for me. I love side two. It starts off with the Hamptons and, you know, just a casual journey from California to the Hamptons. I love how Bruce's vocal here is so... I don't want to use the word naive, but he has this sort of youthful delivery where it's just got like, this optimism that's there. And he's just going where the waves take him. And I really think that translates well to the listener. I think his screams that happen throughout this song are really cool because you never hear Bruce do stuff like that. So that's very fun. Virginia Beach has some excellent reverb guitar and these angular guitar leads that just stab through. And all this mix of that chugging saxophone makes for a really hypnotic and sometimes dizzying listen. It sounds like a poolside James Bond song, and I'm all for it. Surfer Nova. This is a fascinating song. What starts off as a predictable sounding track goes to a complete 180, shuffling into a bossa nova style song. It's amazing. It comes out of nowhere, but that transition is so seamless. And it happens multiple times throughout the track. It's easily one of the most impressive songs on the album. Just song construction alone. That's a feat of engineering to do something like that. Hot pastrami, mashed potatoes, come on to Rencon. Yeah, follows that up. And this is one of my favorites on the album as well. The vocal reverb. I mean, come on, so good. The heavy fuzz sound, the female background vocals. This thing just rolls along and jams. 
Um, it's an insanely fun song. I love the confidence that it has. It just, it's so sure of itself. It's so sure that this is a cool, exciting moment. And it really captures that. Malibu follows that up next and has more of that heavy, fuzz, bluesy kind of feel with these really energetic drums. Um, you know, you feel like you're hanging ten in the sun. You're young and invincible. You're shredding guitar, riding that wave. And the final track, Serpent's Here to Stay. Just in case some squares start sniffing out the scene and start dissing you and your friends, you can deliver the one-two punch of It's Not a Phase, Mom, and I'm Gonna Rock and Roll All Night and Party Every Day. Uh, with a sleigh bell accent on top of a group vocal that sounds exactly like Car Crazy Cutie. It's a hell of an ending, but what a song. Here's the back of the record. Excellent shots of Bruce. And here's what's inside. So you get the words, which are really cool. And the liner notes are in Japanese, with a picture of Bruce from the late 70s. And the record itself is in one of those plastic sleeves, but there you go. There you go. For Beach Boys Completus, for Bruce Johnson Completus, you'll want to hear this album. You'll want to pick up a copy. It's a lot of fun. Um, is it essential? That's hard to say. I would say yes. And that's because I've heard a lot of surf music. A lot of it can sound the same. You have the same chugging rhythms, the same descending guitar riffs, the chimey cymbals that sound like the ocean. There's a lot of tips and tricks that surf music has that just gets replicated over and over and over again. And... For this album to come out during the peak of all that and have so many elements that make it stand apart from everything else. Yes, there's a lot on here that sounds like everything else, but the moments on here that really shine um, absolutely stick with you. Surf and Nova in particular is one of those songs. Having that Bossa Nova shuffle just come in and leave so seamlessly, nothing sounded like that. It really proves that from such an early age, Bruce Johnson was incredibly talented and still is talented and was the worthy person to jump into the Beach Boys fold when Brian didn't want to tour anymore. And then they all stayed together, you know, for many, many years. But my biggest takeaway from this is that Bruce was able to hear a sound and make it his own. He can just as easily fart out a hundred of these things if he wanted to, but he heard what was out there and took elements of that and combined it with what he knew about his own musical upbringing and training and made something really interesting. So I recommend this album for sure. I'd probably give it a seven or eight out of 10. You know, it's not, the, it's not the best thing I've ever heard, but it's really damn cool. And there's moments on here that I think you'll want to check out, like Surfing Around the World, Surfing's Here to Stay, Surfing Nova, The Hamptons, Virginia Beach. There's some great gritty elements on here. There's some bossa nova, there's some pop, there's some surf. It's a lot of fun. My name is Giggins. This has been Bruce Johnson, Surfing Around the World, released in 1963. This copy probably from 1980 or so. Let me know your thoughts on this record in the comments below. Curious to chat about some Bruce with you guys, and um, we'll see you next time. See you in the next review. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you later. Bye.